So this is courtesy of Hype Beast. Um, obviously, um, as you guys are aware, I think I think the hype, no, the Off White show was today. Um, Sans obviously, um, Virgil being around due to his passing, and it looks like Off White have outlined what their plans are in terms of how they're going to approach the brand and how they're going to approach collections and whatnot going forward. You know, with um, Virgil Abloh not being around at the moment, um, it says as follows in a report per purchased uh, in a report by the Business of Fashion, Off White and its parent groups have outlined the future of the label founded by the late Virgil Abloh making the future as a next chap marking the future as the next chapter of Off-White the outline share how the influential imprint NC harness a legacy following the death of the icon last November it's November man time has gone by so fast isn't it really like you blink and it's like it's already March we're heading into April crazy isn't it man RIP to the GOAT. Um, the report highlights the unstoppable creativity of Virgil Abloh as his label will carry out his endless number of ideas that he left in a WhatsApp conversation over the years, which is really cool. The WhatsApp group conversation thing, which even after admit, at the time that I was working with him with that online course that I was doing, I remember a lot of the people in the management team were really annoyed that he wouldn't really get on the phone or do a Skype or do face-to-face -face meetings because even then he wasn't as famous or as flipping you know he didn't he wasn't even in charge of Louis Vuitton men's at the time um but he was still doing a million things at once you know running a bunch of hundred miles per hour all over the world and obviously the best way to communicate with him to get a response was for your whatsapp that's when they first started to do the whatsapp thing and really kind of get into it and a lot of the management team are really getting annoyed by it like why is he just communicate normally like email and you know zoom slack whatever it may be but now that same thing that was kind of and i'd imagine people in the industry some people probably would have said behind the scenes or behind closed doors oh he's not really a serious guy he's sending messages and shit sketching on stuff on below on his phone do you know what i mean i'm sure because people you know have these weird um, preconceptions whatnot but now th that same sort of way of working has now got to the point where they're harnessing it because there's so many so much flipping gold and gems and jewels and information and ideas in there that could essentially feed a couple of collections going forward which is crazy because off-white isn't some you know isn't some small collection isn't some small brand this is a brand that usually sells or makes a lot of clothes right not a lot of it's all great amazing don't get me wrong but they make a lot of clothes especially in the fashion show there's always like 50 plus looks so the fact that he's got that much content that much that many designs that many ideas you know just sitting in a dormant face whatsapp group is amazing really amazing and shows just how much of a beast he was and it's just definitely shows me the kind of similarities of course with somebody prolific like an artist that who i love who's my favorite kind of contemporary artist of all time only well, contemporary artist is not it's all around in picasso right and he was known for his kind of aggressive and over your know, crazy work ethic in terms of the amount of stuff he was able to sketch paint and put together sculpt whatever it may be he left an absolute treasure trove of art right people are still finding pieces here and there all over the place that he kind of left and scattered around the world to a certain extent you know salvador dali did a similar thing but you know prolific you know picasso was at that peak and of course virgil now he's passed you, people no one can really dispute the fact that you know say what you want about his finesse and his precision and the quality of his work whatever it may be but in terms of position he's able to put himself is he did it through just pure force of nature because he just was aggressive with the with the uploads aggressive with the sharing aggressive with the content generation with the idea generation with the execution that's the main part as well he actually didn't just put stuff on line sheets it was actually made real right it was actually tested in real time um, put in front of people whether or not they laughed or scoffed at it like it's pretty sick man really really sick it continues here says Andre Grilly who served as Off-White's um, chief executive officer back since um, back since two, why are they write like that since 2019 noted the next two years we're going to be full speed the full being poured into the brand for its decades oh, let's do that again for the next two years we are going we're going to go full speed the fuel being poured into the brand is for decades for centuries wow virgil would have wanted us to do it he always said that it has to be a multi-generational brand our kids need to go to rodeo drive and rue saint honneur i guess it's a um, really bougie street in paris and see it which i agree with i think that's what he did really well in terms of being able to uh, you know appeal to the high and low um it didn't always work but i felt that approach especially for a newer brand he didn't 
always try and market to the fashion elites or the snobs or the people in the know. He tried to go for regular consumers who just might pop into Selfridges and see something they like and want to cop. And for people that are going to try and seek it out in a boutique somewhere, which is great. He continues, touching on the succession of Off-White, the label is expected to adopt a collective while remaining open to the other routes to adapt to ever-changing landscape of fashion. Um, so he says, it's going to be a group of people and the movement collective said David Di Giglio, a co-founder of New Guards Group, the parent company of Off-White, yeah i think think about linux open source you can inject something new and so and software pattern evolves the new guards group um a french to, yeah. you know what i i'm sure this was something virgil said because it sounds very virgilly right to talk about linux and open source and all that stuff but i have to be honest i don't like this i think you have to decide either it's a collective and you do it as a collective or you do it under one person's vision i think personally they should decide who it needs to be and have it just be that one person and maybe have it be like a sort of like what diesel was doing for a bit was it diesel who did this someone was doing something for a bit where like they had a, a designer coming like a guest designer and then they kind of you know they let them do it for a couple of years and someone else comes in do that maybe do it for four years you have somebody come in for a four-year run they kind of and again it would be a great way to also give people an opportunity who maybe would never get a shot at being like the artistic director of a big flipping fashion brand that shows during paris fashion week that is backed by a major production company or whatever in terms of new guards group and whatnot right and has you know many stores around the world why not just go and use the um, what's that fund that he has oh, i forgot the fund that he has where he's kind of mentoring and giving money to um kids from underrepresented communities and whatnot or black and brown kids right maybe have that maybe have that be like a funnel a kind of where you can kind of bring people in to off white and then maybe you can use those people to be like the main heads of leading that creative charge for a four-year run and then you basically change it every four years and you announce it as a big thing and it kind of becomes like a a weird school to kind of go through like your testing grounds you get to kind of dip your feet in and become like a designer and work in fashion work in the industry maybe you might not go and start your own brand but it just give you an idea of what you want to do right and you get to present on the bigger stage that would be a sick thing to do but we get someone's singular vision like if at most a duo i don't like collectives i don't got be honest i'm not really a fan of the collectives. i don't think they work um very rarely do they work in fashion i think it's either a singular vision or a duo vision that's it and just kind of stick with that and go forward and i think that'll be a great way to honor his legacy honestly it'll be like a literal breeding ground in the school for people to kind of go in show their best work um, be able to kind of touch people influence add to the legacy of the brand and essentially it makes the brand like everlasting Right? Because there'll never be a there's never gonna be a generation of kids who will grow up and see the videos that Virgil did, some of the videos I've got on my channel and and not be inspired and not wanna also get involved and not be kind of inspired by his story, everything, right? So you'd have a never ending stream of amazing applicants coming through from all over the flipping world wanting to kind of show what he meant to them or be able to kind of show their talents on that stage considering that they come from unrepresented communities areas whatever be that'll be sick that'll be so so sick but more likely than not they'll try to collect a thing it probably won't work and then they'll get someone famous to come and do it you know i know you know what i mean it's a business at the end of the day they gotta make money but i would love to do it that way if they did it before but you know what, what can you do um then it continues here da, da, da uh oh this is here um louis vuitton chair so interesting point here louis vuitton chairman and ceo michael burke cited the similarity between the current situation at off-white is similar to dior man imagine only when he's passing they're saying this man when he was around no one was comparing off-white to dior you say that and people will laugh at you Anyway, and went through after the death of Christian Dior in 1957, it says as follows, quote, if the legacy is rich, authentic and steeped in values that go beyond fashion, the odds of turning a, pass a passing into something eternal are spectacular. Yeah, but Dior went through some troubling times too. And you know I mean, Dior even now at the moment with that, what's her name? Um, with that lady at the moment, you know what I mean? Like she's making some absolute trash on that runway. So let's not use Dior as an example. But anyway, um, off I did present their um, show also, um, the Fall 2020 show in Paris. There are some bits on here that I really like, some bits that I didn't. But the biggest thing to come out of this was the video of the actual show. Amazing. They had Jeff Mills doing the music. Like, <sighs> Like he's he set up like in what's that video that iconic video from back in the day where he's got the flipping NPC machine not NPC machine whatever machine that he uses on the floor and he's kind of squatting down and, and there's these massive speakers that are perspect clear obviously you know in the in the style of Virgil and he's just oh 
going to town that thing like amazing to see really cool and this massive chandelier in the background like the setting was great and i'd imagine for his friends and colleagues and whatnot and people that are really close to him and family it must be better it's bittersweet as hell in it because this whole show was like because the thing i'd imagine with the whatsapp group how they're going to continue his legacy it was so you could tell the show was really informed by Virgil's taste and what he left behind and maybe messages he left to people, whatever, maybe, or maybe the work that he did. You could just tell it was. And it must be so bittersweet to be a friend or somebody close to him or a family member to be there and him not be there at the show. Him not kind of popping out at the end, running around, holding someone's hand, you know, kissing someone in the audience, bring uh, kisses, whatever he did. You know what I mean? Like, he's not, not going to be there anymore. You don't get to see his outfit at the end of the runway. Like, it's just such a sad thing in it but it's a great to honor him still do you know what i mean and they're all the flipping stars show that as well loads of really big models some of who i don't really know but some who i do know loads of great looks here and there i'm a big fan of those are really exquisite women's looks i thought that were really cool i've always said anyway off white women's was always the standout compared to the men's i thought the men's wasn't the strongest i always thought his vision of how women should dress or what he likes to see women wear or whatever was really interesting for me it was always kind of a little bit it really stood out in terms of what was available in terms of what was presented during Paris fashion week especially because that's like the pinnacle of i think um fashion weeks and whatnot you know this vision of what a woman look would look like in virgil's head is like amazing you know i mean like a like a down jacket on top of a classical dress with some heels i'm sorry classic dress sorry with some heels and a slit in the front like you know you might not like it but it's still a very unique way of like kind of seeing what women would kind of dress like i'm still not a fan of these sort of uh that what's, what's that thing called the harness but i do prefer this shape oddly enough more so than the other one um again the harness legacy man that's gonna be long in it that legacy and i also like this logo that he developed over the, recently over the years as well this kind of like um logo with like the cut out holes that kind of looks like a piece of cheese i thought that's a great way to kind of instantly know it's an off-white piece instead of the kind of x thing the kind of hazard warning sign whatever it is um some great stuff here yeah look look at the women's stuff like the, the virgin idea of women off white it's just really cool i always thought it's really impressive um really really big fan of it some of the accessories are great big padded jacket the hat is pretty impressive as well i think kind of giving me um vivian westwood vibes there as well and um, this obviously was pretty sick um on all white look number 22 with um holding a flag that says question everything that was amazing look at it that women's look is flipping cool with the combat pants like so excellent man really 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 cool this look is one of my favorites number 28 especially with the model um skin complexion the color of the outfit it's just oof, it pops there's nothing better than really bright colors on darker skin people i know that it's a it's a secret hack it really is i wear lime green i wear this sort of canary yellowy limey color and i look amazing doesn't matter what you wear really really cool the only thing that's weird i think i remember i wonder if women could comment on this is this always normal to have heels where the toes are so like out like that or is that because it's just a runway model shoe and they're not going to be in production like that it's too it feels too sparse for me here there's not a lot of like i mean protection or cover maybe i'm just looking into it wrong here it's a bit too open and sparse but yeah apart from that i love it all really cool looks like look at that look how good that looks again yeah again the toe looks just too out maybe it's a, maybe it's meant to be like that. i'm not too sure but yeah um some cool looks here let's see another one that i look oh yeah this is one of my favorites as well this went so hard number 35 look all brown with this amazing big fur thing uh kind of his interpretation of i guess a, a regular classic sort of dickies carhartt uh double need um overalls you know you got a you got a turtleneck jumper there with the massive hat like i love it love it love it especially if someone like with a big head and big hair like myself that hat is going to be a godsend when it eventually does come out another look too with that fur number on bit of a repeat of a look but i do like it nonetheless i think the trousers are maybe a little bit different the pants got some off-white nikes on there look number 38 and again another brilliant look for women like you might not like it might not be your style but his version his vision of what a woman looks like is really one of a kind in some respects you could say it really really is man let's not let's not let's not lie here i thought this was really cool with the you know face 
I'm surprised not many other Instagram baddies have done this actually. They've got, you know, girls like to do that whole face card because they've got a really cute face and upload it onto Instagram. I'm surprised no one's painted face card with quotation marks underneath their on their underneath their eyes. And of course you've got Serena Williams looking incredible as well on here. She looks really good. Really, really good. Much better than that other show we saw. It was that shoot she did recently where she was looking a bit weird. Yeah. The stripe hanging off here doesn't look the best, but overall she looks great in that outfit there, number 44. I forgot who this lady is. She's somebody, I think, senior known. She looks cool as well. Got these kind of, um, what they call, these ski snowball boots that everyone's wearing at the moment. That looks cool. I think I'm going to have to actually try to see if this works for me and my style and grab a couple of these snow boots. But I think it might be, I think it might, it might not look how I want to look in my head. I want to look like Pharrell. I end up looking like a foot, but you know, I might try. Again, a really cool look with a camo. This I thought was a really great representation or synthesization or if you wanted an example of what the codes are for Off-White, I think this would be it. Look number 47, which is essentially a classic grey blazer, charcoal grey. Maybe there's some additions here and there. The lapels are a little bit different shape-wise. You know, buttons there. You've got a nice little pocket with some great accessories in terms of the paper clips. And then he's got a kilt worn, I guess, over the trousers or maybe it's built into the trousers. Um, classic length holding one of the bags right so everything's kind of been tweaked and twisted here and there uh per his um design ethos i forgot was his three percent or whatever thing that he said but i think this is a real representation of what off-white is about as a brand if there was one image that could kind of be used as a template or used as an example of how to basically t a starting one point to leap off from if you were going to take over louis um sorry off-white i think look number 47 will be the one really would it looks so cool and it's probably done the best. This is probably the best iteration I've seen of it. This is even better than um, Virgil's Met Gala look. Was it Met Gala that he did where he had the kilt thing? This is a much better representation of it, I think, in my opinion. Um, and then we see Capo, Jim Jones walking around. Oh, he's just sick, in it? Jim Jones, if I'm not mistaken, also is funny because when Virgil was alive, it felt like he was... I wouldn't say chasing after the Virgil club, but you know, he was always in the comments making it known he likes the stuff, but you never really saw Virgil kind of reaching back out too tough, apart from maybe the odd time here and there. Maybe there's a bit of distance there. Maybe he got too many requests from rappers and whatnot. I understand that regard, but he did. Um, but it's quite nice to see it kind of come around full circle. Do you know what I mean? And him be able to kind of show the love and be on that runway and look.